Hello and welcome to another episode. I am Brian, the Unskilled Commander. This is my gameplay series where I take four of my decks, pit them against each other to try and find their weaknesses and make them better, find out better ways to build decks, and play Magic the Gathering in general. Hopefully along the way you guys can learn a few things as well, learn from my mistakes, and get better at playing Magic yourselves. This is match two of Angels, Dina, Animar, and Maze's End. I've already taken the first three turns, as always, to get past a bunch of the play of lands and pass. We had a few plays, but nothing crazy. We are starting on turn four. Angels gets to go first. We were able to play Giada, of course, on turn two, and Dina had gained two life off of a land, and we just swung our commander at them. So they took two commander damage, but they went back down to starting 40. Going to play a land for turn, and we will go one, two, three, four. Forever Flowing Chalice kicked for two. So now this taps for two colorless. Nothing else I can really do, unfortunately, because nothing else is... All the creatures in my hand are extremely expensive, except for one, so we'll be able to play that next turn. I guess we could have played this turn, but it's okay. We got the Overflowing Chalice. Nobody else has any kind of threat to us, so we can take some time and build. And I always like to do that at the beginning of the game, sometimes to my detriment, I guess 50% of the time, to my detriment, really, but I like to ramp and play Mana Rocks and just build a board state before I start trying to do anything. So I do end up taking a bunch of hits because I tend to not have creatures out. I will pass turn. Over here we have two lands. One's Golgari Rot Farm, so we bounced the Radiant Fountain that we had played earlier and gained the life, so I will play that again, gaining two life again, tapping Golgari Rot Farm to play Dina, the Soul Steeper. Uh, a 1-3. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. And she has other stuff that I never actually bother with. Uh, I have two mana left, but no two drops, so we will unfortunately pass. Something I've been learning over the course of building decks and th having this channel is I do try to keep the average mana cost low in my decks, but it still always ends up just being about three. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but for the average to be three, that means I have a bunch of like fives and six drops. And if I get those early game by accident, then I don't really get to do too much as well for that reason. Over here, all we really did was play a mirrored landscape and get enough mana to crack it to get two extra forests out quickly. We only have green, and we're not going to be able to play Animar anytime soon. Draw a card for turn, it is not a land, which is not great. Most of the stuff in my hand is green, because that's the bulk of the deck, so I figured it was better to do that. I will tap four, luckily I do have a Reliquary Tower out, to play Abundance. This is a great card. Enchantment. If you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non-land. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen type. Put that in your hand, put the rest on the bottom in any order. So that way we can now start to deck thin if we need. We need colors, so we need lands, really, so we can start churning through those really easy and keep what we have in our hand to start playing. Untap, upkeep, draw for turn. No lands over here either, but that's okay. We've got some land fetching spells. We're going to tap four and play Circuitous Route. Search for two gates, put them on the battlefield tapped. We'll get a Golgari Guildgate and a Simic Guildgate, but because of Gond Gate, they will in fact come in untapped. Two mana, and you know what? I can use that. A blue and one other to play Hithlin Knots. Tap target creature, scry one. We're going to... It doesn't matter too much. We'll tap you down. You can just untap on your upkeep. Uh, but I do get to draw a card. Still not a land that we could play, but that's all right. We did our ramping. And I can play lands from my graveyard, actually. Uh, I'll, unfortunately, I played Evolving Wilds first, so we will replay that just to thick, thin the deck and get an extra color out, I suppose. Although, to be fair, we're just going to get a basic forest because I actually don't have too many basics in the deck, obviously. Nothing else we can do. I'm not going to swing with a 0-3, but does have reach, so actually I can block if she tries to swing over here. Uh, we'll pass. So we're going to untap over here. Upkeep. Draw. We'll play a Plains for turn. You know what? We're going to start strong because that Overflowing Chalice helped out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we can tap Giada for eight as long as we're just playing an Angel to play Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Flying, Vigilance, Indestructible, eight, eight, and other permanents you control have Indestructible, so everything on my board is Indestructible. And Avacyn comes in with an extra counter because of Giada's ability, so she is a Flying 9-9. Nine -nine. Doesn't have haste, and why would she? My god, she's got enough crazy stuff on her. So we're going to go ahead and pass. And that was turn 5. So now, Angels is definitely a threat. Untap, upkeep, draw. Can we do that? Yes, we can. 1, 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> 2, Vraska's Contempt. Exile target creature, Planeswalker. You gain 2 life. Wow, that was hilarious. That's sad. I don't, I mean, that's not great. But it doesn't say anything about being hexproof, just indestructible. So we exile it. Now all your stuff is destructible again. We gain two life, and because we gain two life, or because we gained life, everyone else loses one. Nicely done, Dina. Look at that. Crazy powerful angel stomps onto the battlefield, and Dina's like, shut the hell up. Psh. 
Go away. Nothing else we can do though, so we're gonna pass. That was pretty funny back to back like that. So we're gonna untap, upkeep, move to our draw step, but we're gonna declare land, so we're gonna reveal until we get a land. Okay, there is a ruthless vine stock. It goes to our hand, we will play it. That comes in tap, and this card will go in the bottom. So I have four mana. We'll tap one, two, three, green. To play the enchantment, tribute to the world tree. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two counters on it. But nothing else we can do right now. Pass turn. Untap. Upkeep. Draw for turn. Ooh, that's a fun one. So we're going to tap Command Tower for the Millennium Calendar. Artifact. Whenever you untap one or more permanents during your uh, untap step, put that many time counters on the calendar. You can pay two and tap it to double the amount of time counters on the Millennium Calendar. And whenever there are a thousand or more counters on the Millennium Calendar, I sacrifice each opponent loses a thousand life. That sounds crazy, but honestly, all you have to do is get to around 300 or so, and then you can win within a couple turns. I'm going to tap so two green, so X being four, Nylea's Intervention. Choose one. And we're going to choose Search Your Library for up to X land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand. So we're going to choose to get X four lands. One of which, of course, being Maze's End, which will go onto the battlefield. Okay, so these three go to my hand. Actually, all four go to my hand, and I will play Maze's End, which does come in tapped. And I do not have any ways to play additional lands this turn, so we'll pass. Match one, we did see Gates win in a you know very impressive burst kind of way, where he got ten Gates onto the field by itself, and it already had like eight or nine out. We're going to untap, upkeep, draw for turn six over here. Play a Plains. One, two, three... Four, five, six to play Valkyrie, Valkyrie Harbinger. Comes in with one counter. It's a flying lifelink. Currently now a 5-6 that says at the beginning of, your, of each end step, if you gained four or more life, make a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying. And vigilance. Uh, two mana left. Can't do anything with that. Even if I use his Giada's. So I can swing with Giada. The question is where. I can swing anywhere because she's flying. But who's like, is? are they really a threat? I mean, they have... Maze's end out now. So I guess we'll swing it at you. He'll take two damage, and that's that. Pass turn. One, two, three, four. Play Cosmos Elixir. The beginning of your end step. Draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting life total, otherwise you gain two life. So I'm going to move to my end step. I'm going to draw a card, and I believe I still have to discard, though, because it's the beginning of my end step. Yeah, we're not getting too much land, so we, um, we'll go ahead and get a Lux uh, River Shrine. And that's all we can do. We're going to pass turn. We didn't get a land, but we got a spell that gets us a land. So, I mean, at least that's something. But it's still not doing great right now over there. We're going to untap, upkeep. We're going to say lands again. We're going to reveal. Okay, cool. A mountain goes to our hand, which we will play. This goes onto the bottom of the battlefield. Or bottom of the battlefield. Bottom of the library. Yeah. We will tap everything for Carnage Tyrant. A 7-6 that can't be countered with Trample and Hexproof. Uh, and whenever we creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two counters on it. It is, but when we draw, we have to choose. I will choose land one more time. Okay. Forest goes to our hand. Yeah. Oops. Shoot. These go on the bottom. I think that was it. I don't know. So these go on the bottom. Any order. Uh, this forest goes to my hand. I already played a land for turn. Or did I? Well, yes, of course. I played the mountain because we did our thing. No hasties, but a 7-6 defender is pretty good. And I will go ahead and pass. So we untap over here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Millennium Calendar gets eight counters on it. And then we draw for turn. I will play Demir Guildgate. I will tap these three and activate Maze's End, bouncing it to my hand to go search for a Guildgate and put it on the, or well, a gate and put it on the battlefield. Comes in tap, but untaps because of Gond Gate. We have six mana. Uh, I guess I'll just tap one, two, three, four and play Conduit of Worlds. You may play lands from your graveyard, and you can tap it to choose one target, non-land permanent, from your graveyard. And if you haven't played a spell yet, you can play it, but that's the only spell you can play per turn. I will then tap two and tap the Millennium Calendar to double the counters on it, putting it at 16, and pass turn. Now they're getting dangerous again, so we're going to untap on turn seven. Upkeep, draw, play a planes for turn. I will tap for one. Almost, gotta remember that. We're going to play tap one for commander's plate. It's an equipment. Get, quick creature gets plus three, plus three, and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. Great for monocolor decks that rely on the commander. Tapping three to equip your commander, it costs five to equip anything else. We will put that on Giada. And I will tap one, two, three, four to play the creature Archangel of Tithes. As long as it's untapped, creatures can't attack me or planeswalkers I control unless their controller pays one. And as long as it's attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays one for those as well. She will come in with two counters on her. 
because there are two angels on the field already. We will move to combat. We will swing both of these at you. So you will take five commander, and then four, five, another five, and we will gain five life. We will then move to our end step. We gained more than four life. Hey, we make a four, four angel. When that comes in, one, two, three, it's going to get three counters from Giada. Look at her go. You don't got too much time left, but we're doing pretty decent. You might be able to take out the gates. We're going to pass turn over to here. Untap, upkeep, draw. Still not a land, which is not great. All right, I'm going to tap this for a green to play Thirsting Roots. Choose one I'm going to choose to get a basic land card, reveal it, put it in my hand. Getting a forest, and we're going to put that forest onto the battlefield because I didn't get to play a land this turn. Then one, two, three, four, and play Mage Hunter. It's a three, four. Whenever an opponent casts or copies an instant or sorcery spell, they lose one life. I'm going to move to my end step. My life total is still greater than my starting, so I draw a card. Don't have to discard town, but I do have seven exactly, and I will pass. Untap, upkeep. Um, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say land one more time here, because why not? Okay, it's a forest. It's gonna go to my hand. These two go in the bottom. I'm gonna play a forest. And then I tap red, green, and blue to cast Animar, Soul of the Elements. All uh, right. It is only got a 1-1, one, one. so I put two counters on it, which is fantastic for Animar, because he is protection from white and from black. Whenever he casts a creature spell, put a counter on him. Creature spells cost one less to cast for each counter on him. So now, my creature is already counts two less to cast. Fantastic. We're going to tap four mana. Costs two less for a total of six to play Kadama of the East Tree. We're casting a creature spell. That goes up. It's a 6-6 six, six with reach. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. That has a power of three or greater, so I get to draw a card. I will declare non-land this time. It's land and Thorn of the Animist. That comes to our hand. This goes onto the bottom. I have no available mana, but we do have a 7-6 with trample and hexproof. Where do we want to send it? Now they've got one, two, three, four, five, six gates. They're going to play Mazes End, but it's going to come in tapped unless they get something that lets things come in untapped. And we don't have that. They don't. We don't know what they have in their hand, but they haven't played anything like that yet. So they're scary, but not that scary. Over here, however, we've got a 7-7 seven, seven flyer and a 5-7 flyer. So even if I swung with my 7-6, nothing would get through. And it might destroy one creature. So we're going to need to really buff up the battlefield over here. So I guess what we do is we sit back and we wait. We could swing over here because they have the highest life total tied with angels. And just swing on principle. But let's see, what have I cast? I have only cast two creatures, so that's not going to trigger. Yep, I'm going to pass. So we're going to untap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to untap 10 things. And you know what? Boom. 26 on it now. Draw for turn. We're going to tap 1, 2, 3, and 4 to play Deep Analysis. Target player draws two cards. I'm going to draw two. One, two. All right, unfortunate. Not what I was hoping for. I will tap for a green to play Sakura Tribe uh, a Scout. I can pay. I can tap it to put a land from my hand on the, into play, but it's a 1, 1, but I've, obviously it has 70 seconds, so I can't do that right now. I'm going to tap 1 for an Expedition map. Pay 2 to sack it to go get a land, not a basic. It says a land. So obviously I'll just get a gate because Maze's End is already out. So we'll get Gruel Guild Gate. Comes in untapped because of guns, and I have two mana still. So I will tap the two mana to tap the Millennium Calendar, go up to 52. So we're getting there. And then I guess I will play Maze's End comes in tapped. So now we've got a lot of things to untap on our upkeep. And that's it. We're just going to go ahead and pass turn. So we're, we're kind of a threat, sort of, but Angels is clearly the real threat. So we come over here to turn eight, I believe. Untap, upkeep, draw. Oh, well, this doesn't seem good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. A Chroma Vision of Ixidor. A Flying First Strike Vigilance Trample 6-6. Six, six. So it's going to come in with one, two, three, four counters on it. At the beginning of each combat, until end of turn, each other creature you control gets plus one, plus one if it has flying, plus one, plus one if it has first strike, and so on for a bunch of other word soups. So what that means is that, so we will now move to combat and... Giada's going to get plus two, plus two. This one's going to get plus two, plus two. And these are going to get plus one, plus one. Crazy. Uh, we are definitely going to move to combat. And I think we're going to be able to take out gates. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yep. We swing all of it. That's 28 damage. Kaboosh. You are...
Dunzo. Which is fair, because they won last game, so I can't fault Angels for going at them again. And it's not... And honestly, when you're playing... This is a best of three. We're playing three matches of these decks. So yeah, you know what the decks can do now. You're going to start planning for it. They've got Mazes Zen out. They've got a lot of stuff going on. They're going to be able to play multiple cards. Multiple lands, rather. you got to take them out before they hit that. And even the Millennium Calendar is starting to get up there a bit. We have a lifelink on just this one. So we're going to gain seven life. And then because we have we gained four or more life, we're going to make another four for Angel. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to come in with five counters on it. See how Giada can just make your decks, your Angel deck goes crazy? So then we pass turn over. I don't think anyone's going to be able to come back from that. Even Big Stompy isn't really going to do it. I'm going to tap Forest for a green to play Essence Ward. And then I'm going to tap... One, two, three, to play Alias Blood Mage. So I will gain a life. I gained a life. Everyone else loses one. And then I'm going to choose to create a pest. So another creature enters. I'm going to gain a life, and everyone's going to lose a life. That doesn't really solve the situation, but I'm hoping there's a way I can do something on my next turn. But then I would move to my end step. It's higher. I draw a card. Still not a thing. One, two, three. So I pass turn. So we untap over here. Upkeep will say non-land. Okay, it's just a return to nature. It goes to my hand. Put that on the bottom. I'm going to play a forest for turn. We're going to tap four mana to play Sarkhan's Unsealing. It's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power four, five, or six, it deals four damage to any target. If you play a creature spell with power seven or greater, it deals four damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. So four, and then it costs three less. Vault born. Oh, wait, sorry. First of all, I made a mistake. So whenever I cast Sarkhan's Unsealing, when another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put in the battlefield this way, you may put a permanent with lesser or equal value at a commemorative mana cost. So we'll just put Thorn of Amnest on the battlefield, which says non-creature spells cost one more to play. Then we would play Vaultborn Tyrant. So when Vaultborn Tyrant or another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield, you gain three life, one, two, three. And then when it dies, if it's not a token, create a token that's a copy of it. So... I played a creature spell that has power three or greater, so I draw a card. We're going to choose non-land. It's Guardian Project. That'll go to my hand. And then we cast this normally, so this goes up. And then we didn't do it with this ability, so we can cast something five, six, seven, or less. So I will just play Gilded Lotus, which can tap for three mana of any one color. Oh, still just so shy. Um... Yeah, well, I won't cast Guild Lotus. I'll put on the battlefield off of Kadama, but you get the idea. And regrettably, I mean, the, the deck is doing fantastic, but it's just not going to be able to keep up with Angels. Okay, so we're going to have to pass, really. I mean, I've got a 6-6 six, six with Reach, which is nice against some of the Angels. i got to try to remember that as well. But yeah, there's nothing else we can... Re well, protection from white and from black, and all of those creatures are white, so we really could swing a 5-5 five, five Commander, but that would just... Like, the Commander damage is most likely the way to kill them, but that would gain their attention for sure, and then just similar to that, we would swing everything and probably be able to take us out on their next turn. But at the same time, we've only got one thing with reach, so it would be kind of, you know what, it's kind of stupid. Just, we're going to swing. We're gonna, you're going to take five commander. Hey, hi, how you doing? Did you notice me over here? I'm going to pass turn. Oh, and I forgot, uh, I did play a six drop, so it's going to deal four damage to any target. Unfortunately, it can't kill that. Yeah, it can't kill anything right now, so just four damage to your face. Your face! And then we pass. All right, untap, upkeep, draw on turn nine, I believe. Oh gosh, this is gross and crazy. We go one, two, three, four, five. Archangel of Thune, just a fantastic card. Uh, it's a flying lifelink three, four. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. It's like practically over at this point. It's going to come in with one, two, three, four, five, six counters on it. So it is now a nine, ten. All right, so we absolutely have enough damage on board with the abilities that it will trigger to kill either one of them in the air. So who is the threat? I mean, they've got the commander damage they can get through on us. I guess we got to try for that, right? So we're going to move to combat and swing almost everything in the air at them. Yeah, if we swing all of these in the air, it should be over 40 damage. I believe it's like 41 or 2 or something like that. Boom. Kaboosh. There you go. Okay. I think that was the smart move. We've got two blockers up. And we gained life because we only have one thing with lifelink, surprisingly. But four, five, six, seven. So we're going to gain seven again, which will make another angel that would come in with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight counters on it. And because we gained life, everything gets a counter. That's not that. Okay, this is it. So we go to untap, upkeep, 
It's still not a land. I didn't really shuffle these very well, so I think that's just game. There's nothing I can do to trigger life gain. Uh, they didn't cast anything. Yeah, we're just going to call it, because there's just nothing I can do. Like, I just, I didn't shuffle it well enough, and there's just no lands. And if I'd have gotten a couple more lands, as I should have, instead of being, like, I'm on four lands. I have five mana, four lands. It's not enough, and we are in turn nine. So there you go. Angels is your winner. It's not that they didn't earn it, because they certainly did very, very well. But unfortunately, Dina just, that was on me for not shuffling well enough, basically. So I hope you enjoyed the match. I hope you saw some really cool cards, saw how powerful angels can be. Uh, let me know in the comments if you are if you have an angels deck and how you build yours. Is Giada your commander, or do you have somebody else? Are you, do you think Giada is just too obvious and too easy of a commander for angels to have? Which, I mean, I totally would agree with, because she does make the deck incredibly powerful with minimal effort. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, all that nonsense. Throw some likes around, and I will see you next time.